Alrighty. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're really excited to take you through this webinar um, and we hope it's really helpful for you. So thank you. This is the, the Make Your Online Store More Customer Friendly with Email webinar that we're hosting. Um, I'm Bridget. I'm Sarah, and we're both on the customer experience team at Hive. Uh, so again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join this webinar with us. Just a quick reminder that at the end of this webinar, uh, feel free to contact us to schedule a free email marketing consultation. All right. Oops, let's get into it. So. With many businesses forced to pivot from brick and mortar retail to e-commerce, there's a huge opportunity to leverage email marketing to make your online experience more customer friendly. So why not engage online customers the same way you would help them in your retail store? That's what a good uh, e-commerce email strategy does. So in this uh, webinar, we're gonna be covering four topics. We'll be learning more about getting new customers through the door with newsletters and signup forms, uh, welcoming your customers with welcome automations, getting to know your customers with segmentation, and helping customers complete their purchase with abandoned cart and browse abandonment automations. So we're gonna start with signup form, um, which is the best way to get new customers into your store. Um, one, one of the most important things to think about with your signup form is proper placement. Uh, so right now, you're probably promoting your business on social media, so including your sign-up form somewhere on your socials, like your Instagram bio, is a great way to capture sign-ups, as well as having an easy-to-spot sign-up form on your website's footer and header, or a pop-up modal pro uh, promoting your visitor to subscribe. So for this example, if Ian, our CEO, stumbled across your store's Instagram, and was interested in your products, having a newsletter sign up URL in your bio would be the easiest way and simplest way to lure Ian into your store. For example, Frank does a really good job of having a really clear copy in their Instagram bio, as well as including a URL to subscribe to their newsletter, and they also include a 10% off discount, making it that much more enticing to sign up for their emails. Here's a really good example of a footer that tells customers what to expect to receive when they sign up for your newsletter, as well as an example of a pop-up modal that helps you get your sign-up form in front of customers so they don't miss it. Next, the most, one of the most important things with your sign-up form is asking for the right information. Um, so for example, if your store has men's and women's clothing, asking for gender is uh, usually recommended, as well as category of interest. When gathering this information, it helps you in the long run send, uh, to send more targeted emails that your customers are actually interested in. For example, if Ian walked into my store and the only thing I knew about him was his name and his email, I'd probably only send him our general newsletter. However, if I was able to collect his interest, his location, and his birthday, I'd be able to send him much more targeted emails that he would definitely be more likely to engage with over our general newsletters. The last thing to consider when creating a sign-up form in your ESP is to make sure you draw them in with a discount because at the end of the day, we're all humans, we all love discounts. <laughs> so include that 10% off, simple discount to get people to sign up for your newsletter. Um, in Hive, it's super easy to create a custom sign-up page where you can choose all the information you're interested in collecting from potential customers. So with that being said, um, does anybody have anything, any questions, any thoughts about signup forms? Feel free to share in the chat as well. And I see someone ask, will these slides be sent out afterwards? Yes, we're actually recording our screen right now. Um, so you can hear our lovely voices along with the slides. But if you just want the slides, we can also send that out to you as well. Yeah. And of course, like we mentioned before, um, we'll be having free email marketing consultations um, that you can sign up afterwards. So, yeah. Yep, so if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to drop in the chat. Um, okay, I see a question from Michaela. What do you think are the best things to put in a sign-up form? So this is really a great time to gear towards your brand. Um, for examples, uh, we said that 
including uh, gender would be a good thing to collect. But if you're a unisex brand, uh, you wouldn't need to collect on gender. Um, and also, for example, if you only shipped to certain countries, it would probably be more beneficial for you to collect location versus gender. So again, it's more of a um, brand uh, specific kind of perspective. Um, and if you're curious about uh, learning what types of uh, information to gather for your specific brand, definitely feel free to email us afterwards and we can kind of strategize that with you as well. Thank you, Michaela, for the question. Um, are there any sign up for no-nos? That's a great question. When, when is too much too much? I guess it's, um, it's really just trying to focus on what are you trying to gather from your customers? What's the most important thing when it comes to your products? Um, it really depends on what you're specifically selling. Um, with no-nos, I guess it's more so like personal information um, that isn't really relevant to your brand. And I guess also if you're if you're asking too many questions, it's probably going to hinder the person from signing up to your newsletter in the first place. Mm -hmm. So erring on the side of asking fewer and more important uh, questions is definitely our advice. Um, I mean, people are lazy, you know, yeah. they don't, they don't want to answer, and sweet. make it short and sweet and stick to the most important things. Yeah. That will be relevant to your brand. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? I'd have your son <laughs> connected to a welcome email too. For sure. Great segue. Thanks, Antonio. <laughs> All right, so you've done an awesome job setting up your sign-up forms and your contact list is growing. But what do you do when someone subscri subscribes? You wouldn't let a customer walk around in your store without saying hello and asking how you can help them out. So why not do the same thing for your online store? Turns out 74% of online consumers expect a welcome email when they subscribe. Not only are welcome emails automations expected, but they also boost your engagement with three times more opens and clicks and revenue per email compared to the regular promotional email campaign. So we recommend setting up a three-part welcome automation triggered off a new subscriber. Your first email should give your customer a chance to confirm their subscription. A confirmation email often includes a quick thank you and a button to confirm their subscription. Um, if you offered a discount, like Sarah mentioned, um, this email would be a, a great time to mention all those details. Cool. So these are two great examples of your first welcome email. This Hive example is just a simple confirmation button. Um, and then this Tadly example is great because it's branded. It links out to their online store so that they, uh, their new subscribers can use that discount. Awesome. So then your second email in the series um, should share more about your brand. Uh, this Allbirds email template is a great example. Um, they shave, share their company mission and suggest popular products. Um, their template is quirky, branded, um, and emphasizes what makes their product unique. So this is kind of where you share your story. And then your third email should be more personalized. Um, you've asked your customers what they're interested in, in when they signed up. Um, so now it's set time to send some emails they all care about. Cool. So are there any questions um, for you know, welcoming customers in this welcome automation? Oops. Give you a couple seconds. It's pretty straightforward. It's, expected and you know a great way to connect with your customers right off the bat cool oh we see Michaela um, when should you send a welcome email like a day later we actually recommend sending that first you know confirmation email right away um, you know lets them know that their their sign up was collected um, and allows them to confirm their subscription. Um, after that, it's pretty brand specific. Um, so it kind of depends on how often you send your emails in general. Um, but you know, uh, sending that second email right away doesn't hurt either. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I see um, Fatima's uh, question. Um, there definitely is. We have more resources on sending welcome automations, and we'd be happy to link that out and um, 
engage in more of a, a, a deeper discussion on those later. Yeah, we have a, um, we have a uh, guide specifically on all the different types of automations to set up for event marketers, which I think you'll, um, you'll definitely enjoy. And yeah, we can, we can definitely send that to you after, after the webinar. Awesome. Cool, cool. Um, awesome. And uh, unless anybody has any other questions, we're going to move on to segmentation. Cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> So segmentation, this is the best way to get to know your customers. A good segmentation uh, strategy helps you understand your subscribers so you can send emails they care about. So just a little background, if you're not familiar with segments, um, there's groups of subscribers based on qualities that are important to your brand. So no two customers are the same. If two people walk into your store, you wouldn't assume that they like the same things. So your segmentation strategy should include segments by customer interest and customer behavior to truly understand what your customers care about. So for customer uh, segmenting by customer interest, it's best to focus on product category. For example, if Ian walked into your store, you'd probably ask him what he's most interested in so that you could point him in the right direction. This situation works the same with newsletters. If Ian is interested only in hats and you have that information collected, why would you send Ian an email about pants? The guy doesn't even have a lower <laughs> half. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, now we're also going to talk about segmenting by customer behavior. So we want to focus on capitalizing on purchasing behavior and email engagement behavior, or sorry, and VIP subscribers. For purchasing behavior, segmenting your customers by purchasing allows you to suggest products that your customers might like based on what they bought in the past. Also, segmenting by purchase behavior allows you to keep track of your top subscribers. Um, so that brings us to our VIP subscribers. So in Hive, we already segment your VIP subscribers for you. Um, in this case, it's called your high value Shopify customers. And uh, by default, this is your top five percentage of your spenders um, so that you can easily offer reward programs or discounts to increase their lifetime value and create a positive net promoter effect. So with that being said, um, does anybody have any questions or thoughts about segmentation? Um, feel free to drop it in the chat and we will answer away. Yeah, it's a super, oh. um, so we have a question from Antonio. Do VIP segments have to just be your top 5% of your top customers? So this is the top five percentage is just what Hive chooses for your default. Um, but in Hive and I'm sure in other ESPs as well, you can filter for, uh, any percentage of your of your customer list. So for example, if you wanted to have a segment that was your top 50% spenders and a segment for your top 30% spenders, you could have a VIP rewards program where if your customers enter into your um, your top 30%, they could unlock uh, special rewards and offers, um, for example. So it's all up to how you want to do your VIP strategy. A lot of brands have kind of capitalized on like wanting their subscribers to be VIPs and wanting them to feel exclusive and important. And I think if you can make all your customers feel like VIPs, then you're doing something right. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. Cool. Does anybody else have any other questions? Thanks, Antonio. <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, we'll wait a little. Uh, I still take it so I can call them all VIPs. There you go. <laughs> Maybe uh, they will buy more. Honestly, if you include VIPs in uh, in the subject line, then you know people like to be people like to be like treated VIPs. important. Exactly. Pull the red carpet out. Especially now, you know, make them feel important. <laughs> Everyone's at home. They all they're doing is reading emails. And Now's shopping the time. Online. <laughs> shopping online. Now's the time to make them feel like VIPs. Um, awesome. Cool. Well. If we have any more questions on segmentation, feel free to shoot them in the chat, but we can move on forward. Awesome. So let's say Ian's grateful for this uh, friendly store experience and he finally buys a hat. Um, what's the first thing you would do after he's checked out? Uh, say thank you. You wouldn't let someone leave with a purchase in hand without saying thanks. So saying thank you is one of the easiest ways to get repeat customers. Repeat customers are responsible for 40% of the average e-com store revenue, which on average is created by only 8% of its customers. 
So setting up a thank you automation for customers is a simple way to make them, a uh, simple way to be remembered, differentiate your brand, and make customers feel cared for. This typical template example is simple, well-branded, and makes customers feel appreciated. So they're much more likely to shop with you again. Cool. But what if customers didn't make a purchase? In e almost up to 70% of people who start a checkout don't buy products at all. That's a lot of potential revenue loss that you can recover with a simple abandoned cart email automation. Abandoned cart emails average a 10% conversion rate. So let's talk about how to set one up. An abandoned cart email automation is triggered when a customer's cart is full, but they haven't completed a purchase. So the main call to action in an abandoned cart automation is to return to the store to complete your purchase of a particular item. So this Warby Parker example is awesome because it encourages their customer to go back and buy these frames with a simple message and a link out to the product that they left in their cart. Cool. But <laughs> what if a customer's cart wasn't full, but they spent a lot of time browsing your products? In a real store, if you saw Ian, for example, looking at the hat section in the front of the store, you'd probably offer her to guide him to the back where there's a new collection of hats waiting there. A browse abandonment automation is a great way to do this online. Browse abandonment emails average a 12% conversion rate, meaning that for every thousand visitors that leave your online store, you could be making an additional 120 sales, money otherwise left on the table. By setting up a browse abandonment automation, you'll increase the chances of potential and current customers converting in a hands-off way. So this I love ugly example is personal, on brand and concise. They've included images of the products the customer spent time looking at. So these t-shirts are all um, something uh, this customer was browsing um, and the add to cart link under each item makes it convenient for the customer to complete their purchase. And ESPs, like Hive, uh, make it easy for your customers to complete a purchase by having abandoned cart and browse abandonment automations pre-built and ready to customize. So this is kind of what it looks like in Hive when you're creating those automations. Super simple, makes it really easy for the customers. Cool. So do we have any questions about these three automations that um, help customers complete their purchase and feel, you know, <laughs> we'll hop in the chat see if anyone's thinking of any questions mm, cool yeah so antonio's asked uh which journey should i set up referencing customer thank you abandoned cart browse abandonment cool so each serve a different purpose um but they take really a short amount of time to set up and by setting them all up you capture revenue that would ordinarily be missed. So it's really, it's to your advantage to set them all up. Um, a, definitely a thank you, obviously, uh, for purchases, but the other two are super simple and convert, you know, mm -hmm. potential buyers to official buyers. And that's what we want. <laughs> exactly. If you're going to set up one, might as well set up all three. You know? Exactly. It's gonna, especially depending on your ESP, it could take like two more minutes for you to set up uh, that and capture like, all this revenue that would have just been missed. Yeah, the amount of times I browse something and then I get a browse abandonment and I think, yeah. oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot. I forgot <laughs> I liked this. I'm gonna buy it now, you know? Exactly. So. Cool. Yeah. But there's no more questions about that. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. All right, so we just went through the best practices for making your e-commerce e customer experience more friendly. Um, you wouldn't say the same thing to every single person that walks into your store. Um, and it should be the same with email. We're here to help you send tailored emails that will keep your customers engaged and coming back to your store. Um, so that concludes our webinar. Um, but if you have any additional questions, um, you know, you can put them in the chat now, but also feel free to email us at hello at hive.co and schedule a one-on-one -on -one free email marketing consultation where we can kind of dive in um, to more specific questions related to your brand and help with your strategy. Mm -hmm. Help break, break down what, what segments are important to you, what automations you want to get set up, if you want to trial with Hive or, or, or anything, or yeah, if you're yeah. on any ESP and you just want advice, we're here for you. So feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to chat.
Awesome, Michaela. We look forward to talking to you. Thanks, Michaela. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We really appreciate it, and we're excited to see the emails you guys send. Yes. Capture that revenue. <laughs> That's the end goal. Yeah. Revenue 2020. Revenue 2020. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think we can wrap it up. Thank you guys. All right. Cool. So again, we, we recorded this entire presentation. So if you want to uh, share it with your team or rewatch it before you go to bed, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And uh, visit our site. We have a lot of more resources there, including video tutorials, um, blog posts, FAQs, um, and some, some great resources on everything we talked about today. Um, when the, will the presentation be sent out? Um, um, pretty sure shortly after this, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, a scheduling bill to go out for uh, everyone who's attended this webinar as well. So, so you'll get it. Don't yeah. you worry. That's, <laughs> we want you to get this. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. Awesome. awesome. All right, Thank well, you guys so much. I think we will wrap it up. And, and send, see it out to you. <laughs> send us out. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> awesome. See you guys later.